Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Yes, this is a weird intro to this video, but I have some massive chopping skills going on right now, and um, that's just that's just what we're doing. So today's video, we're going to can some Southern Chow Chow. This is a relish that is bomb.com on some sweet beans and cornbread. So all Chow Chow is, is just get whatever veggies you have extra from your garden or whatever, and you make it into a relish. You can make it with absolutely anything. So you're going to need 16 cups of diced veggies. You could use a food processor or anything like that. But I like using my hands because I feel like I just want to put my love into the chow chow. And I feel like if I do hard work with my hands, it makes it taste better. I don't know. could be a mental thing. I could be just a loony person, but that's how I feel. So I am going to chop this with my hands. Finally, dice 16 cups of whatever veggies you have. I'm using cabbage, green tomatoes, four bell peppers, and some onions from my garden. And I'm going to use a very large zucchini. You will see that in a moment. But yeah, watch me, watch me chop all these veggies. Purdy. You're going to get you some cannon pickling salt, safe for cannon. Put you two big heaping tablespoons on top of all those veggies. And you're going to mix it up real good with your hands. Get them hands dirty. God gave you two hands. You're going to use them two hands. You're going to mix it up. Make sure the salt's mixed up real good. And you're going to get you some plastic wrap. And put that plastic wrap on top of this bowl. And you're going to put that bowl in the refrigerator overnight. Forget about it until tomorrow. That's it. Forget about it until tomorrow. Don't touch it, guys. Don't touch it. You'll want to eat it, don't. Fill up your canner. Step two. Boop. Put a little bit of vinegar in your canner because this keeps um, the jars from getting white residue on the outside. Now we're going to put our bread on and start heating it up. Next step, wash your jars. Put one to two inches of water in your jars so they don't float away when you set them on your rack. Tip, always add an extra. I think I'm gonna get seven pints. I'm putting eight in here. Fill up that canner with all of them jars just like you see me doing right here. Do it like kind of opposite from each other so it doesn't tip over. Let's let them sit in here, start boiling up so they can get sanitized. After it starts boiling, I'm gonna let them boil in here for 15 minutes. Remember, 
put this in the refrigerator overnight to let it soak in all that salt, it created a lot of juice. We're gonna drain all of this water. Do not rinse it off, just drain the water. You're gonna need some celery seed and mustard seed first. I learned this trick from uh, a YouTube channel, Whipper Will Holler. I love them, that lady, she reminds me of my mamma. But I didn't do this before and I did this last time I made a batch of this and, and it worked like she said. Um, you toast these up in your hot pan first and it helps the aroma and it helps the flavors get out. So that's what we're gonna do. Alrighty. So you're gonna need a tablespoon of yellow mustard seed. Two teaspoons. This is a half. There's one teaspoon. Two. First is toast these. There's nothing in this. It's just dry. You just do this for about 60 seconds, 60 to 90 seconds, I think. Now we're going to need three cups of white vinegar. I think you can do like half white vinegar and half apple cider if you want, but I just do this. Remember, it's vinegar, it's gonna be smelling. Two, three. All right, you're gonna need some ground ginger. I got my recipe wrote down that I'm referring to. Half a teaspoon of ground ginger. One teaspoon of ground turmeric. I won't fit. This stains really bad, so don't use um, one of your favorite wooden spoons or something because it will stain. But there's a little trick to this. If you put it in boiling water, it gets the stain out. But I'm, I'm just warning you, this stains. <laughs> now, you're gonna need some allspice. One teaspoon. One teaspoon of garlic powder. Two. Um, I put extra because I like extra. This is the kicker. I seen this on the Whipper Wheel Hauler video too, and I added it to my recipe, and, and I like it. One tablespoon. Now I'm eyeballing it. Three cups. One. Two. Just enough. Three. I'm gonna stir it up a little bit. All right, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna let this come to a rolling bowl. And then after it comes to a rolling bowl, I'm gonna turn it down and we'll let it boil, simmer lock for about 15 minutes, I guess, 10, 15 minutes. All 
Alrighty, it simmered. Now it's time to add, add all them veggies. <laughs> I'm doing it with my hands. Why? Because God gave me two hands and I ain't afraid to use them. Let her simmer about 30 minutes. All right, she's done. You want to get everything ready and start canning it up. Pull your hot jars out of your water bath canner. Get everything you need ready. Get your chopstick for debubbling, your funnel, your ball grabber, your bowl of vinegar. Get it all ready so you won't be scrounging around this? trying to find it. What we're going to do, first we're going to ladle in, you notice it's slotted. We're going to ladle in the veggies first. And after we ladle in the veggies to a half inch head space, we're going to fill it up with the liquid. Bubble. I normally use a paper towel for this, but I don't want to go downstairs and get a roll of paper towels because I'm out up here. But I'm going to use my kitchen towel. Okay, I'm going to clean our rims with white vinegar. Ensures a good seal. Plus, this can be extremely stick. Start adding your lids and your rings. Make sure to wash your lids and rings before you do this. Finger tip tie. A lot of people ask me what finger tip tie is. Hold on, I'll show you. This, this is finger tip tie. When it stops, you see how it stopped? Go one more. Boop. These are hot, so be be careful. You might want to use your ball grabber, but I don't. I'm just being weird, I guess. All right, now I'm gonna drop them in, and when it starts boiling, we're gonna time it for 15 minutes. 15 minutes for pints, 20 minutes for quarts. All right, in she goes. While we're waiting for the jars to process, I turned on my 15 minute timer. I was gonna tell you, I'm going to link the Whipper Will Holler video down below where she does Southern Chow Chow. Um, mine is a little different from hers, but for the most part, it's kind of the same. And you can use whatever vegetables you wanna use in this. My recipe calls for 16 cups of fresh cut, finely cut veggies. You can do whatever you want. If you have corn, use corn. If you have squash, use squash. Use a mixture of things, but use whatever you want. You don't have to use exactly what I did. Chow chow is basically just your garden leftovers that you don't know what to make with. You don't have enough cabbage to make a whole mess of sauerkraut. You don't have enough peppers to make this or that. It's just, you have a little bit and you put it together and you make this chow chow relish. This one is not hot or spicy. So if you want hot or spicy chow chow, add like jalapenos or something to it, I'm sure. It is on the sweet side and it is so good in sweet beans and cornbread. I love it. It's really good in potato salad. It's good in chicken salad, pasta salad. It has many, many uses, but my favorite is beans and cornbread. It's so good. So stinking good. I'm not a big relish fan. I, it's 
never really been my thing unless it's like sweet relish and I'm putting it like a potato salad but this I love it if you don't like relish you might like this because I do but I will leave my recipe that I used in the description box below and I also link the whipple the whipper will holler video where she makes it timer has went off so There we go. We're gonna pull it up. Oops, one tipped over. It's fine. See? Would you just look at it? Just look at it. It's so pretty. Chow Chow's pretty. I don't care what nobody says. I like it. It's beautiful. I will show you guys some Chow Chow that I just opened that I canned last year. Just to show you what it looks like. We use half a jar at a time <laughs> when we eat it in soup beans. But that's what she looks like. Okay, guys, that's it. That's me canning some Southern Chow Chow. You're going to leave them sitting on the counter for 12 to 24 hours and don't touch them so that they can, you know, they can rest and relax. A couple of people have asked me a few questions about the shelf life of canned foods. Um, Ball, the Ball brand says minimum 18 months. They can last years as long as the seal has not been broken. And when you open it up, smell test, if it smells good, it's probably good. Um, I have things that I opened this year from five years ago and we ate it <laughs> it was good it's just a recommendation 18 months it lasts longer than that way longer as long as you store it right and it seals good another thing people have asked how you know it's sealed or not okay after it has set 12 to 24 hours you're going to take your jar i can't show you on the chow chow because it's got to sit and it's really hot this is the peaches i can last time so we're going to test it Pressing the button in the middle. If it pops up and down, like, it's not sealed. But that's not the only test. If it doesn't go up and down, we're gonna take off the ring because we do not store our jars with the ring on. This can rust and it can also provide a false seal. If it's on and this comes in sealed, it can seal itself back up, but the seal's already been broken. Therefore, bacteria can get inside and it will ruin. So we do not do this. Okay, this is our second test. We're gonna pick it up only by the flat. If it stays, we're good. It's sealed, baby. We're good to go. I think that's all the questions that I've seen in the comments of my last canning video. If you have any more questions, just put them in the comments down below and I'll try my best to answer them in my next canning video because it's canning season there's going to be more canning videos it's just how it is <laughs> remember guys I'm doing a southern frugal mama t-shirt campaign I will leave the link for the t-shirts in the description box below all money raised from the t-shirts go to our random acts of Christmas kindness fund it's when every day of December me and the boys and Dusty do something nice for our community we either take nursing homes gifts we give gifts to like a random neighbor we bake them treats and take to neighbors something like that we always do something else each day of december so all proceeds all profits from the t-shirt sales go to that fund so if you would like to be involved in that um you can go ahead and follow the link down below and get you a t-shirt but i will see you guys later see you next video remember stay kind and positive i love you